Over the next several videos, we're going to take a look at some CSS effects, and most of these involve CSS3. Now, some of the functionality is existing functionality, but a lot of this stuff is new with CSS3. And we'll be covering opacity, gradients, and even combine opacity and gradients, and also cover box shadows and any other subjects that I can think of. But in this video, we're first going to cover opacity, which is the easiest, and then we'll move into some more complex subjects like gradients and box shadows. So you can see here I've created two div sections and I've given them IDs of box one and box two and they have exactly the same CSS rules. So they are both blue, essentially blue squares. Now the default opacity for every element is always 1.0. The values range from 0.0, .0 which is full opacity, all the way up to 1.0, which is no opacity. And as I said, the default value is always 1.0, as it should be. So there's no transparency at all within these sections. And that's the word you'll hear also. Even though the property is opacity, you'll hear the buzzword transparent, making your elements transparent. So we're going to keep box one the same. So we have something to compare against. So this will remain at an opacity of 1.0. But box two, we're going to go ahead and put in the opacity property. So it is opacity. And let's go ahead and give this a value of 0.4. And of course, we need a semicolon. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's refresh our page. And there you can see this is now looking somewhat transparent. Now, if we set this down to the lowest setting, which is 0.0, .0 this should disappear completely. And you can see it did. This is now completely transparent. And there may be some cases you will want to do that. And we'll talk about that in future videos. Let's go ahead, though, and set this back to 0 0.5. So we'll be at the halfway mark. And we'll refresh our page. And there you can see it's back. And it's somewhat transparent. Now, usually with the opacity property, you're also going to set up a hover effect with this. So let's go ahead and do that right down here. And you will remember this is a pseudo selector. But first, we need to use our ID selector first. So let's go ahead and do that. And you will remember that always starts out with a pound sign. And we'll type in box two. Then, of course, a colon is what identifies this as a pseudo selector. And of course, the state that we want to alter is hover. So that's the one we're going to use. And then, of course, we need the famous squiggly brackets. Now, what we're going to do here is set the opacity to full. And this will give kind of a nice transition. So when we hover over our element, people will know that they are hovered over the element because the transparency will disappear. And in order to do that, of course, we need to set this to the highest setting, which is 1.0. So when they hover over this element now, it should be completely visible. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's refresh our page. And when we hover it over it, look, there is now no opacity. Hover on and off and you can see the effect we get. So this is a nice little effect a lot of people will use with their web pages. Now, of course, in this video, we did this for an entire section, but you can also do this against images. So those are really the two main uses of opacity. You'll use it against a section or you'll use it against an image. So in the next video, we'll actually do this against an image. And this will be very similar to what we do here. We're just going to use it against a IMG element. So we'll do that in the next video. See you guys then.